First year is so actually working right, right off the bat. First of all, I'd like to welcome all of you to the graduating class of 2014. Cadets, I'd like to welcome you to the brotherhood and the sisterhood. And it's kind of interesting looking here. I hope to God this is the last time you have to sit across from your sheriff in such a solemn manner. <laughs> this is a great day. Unfortunately, it's under a dark cloud. We lost two Las Vegas Metro officers this week. And Alan Beck and Igor Soldo, it's tough on the whole world, but it, to be quite honest with you, it's tougher on the family and we in law enforcement, and you now are part of that family. If we could just take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Now let's get to the joyous part. I'd like to recognize a couple of people here. If I miss you, I apologize. Uh, my eyesight's very good, but my brain doesn't function really well. Our president, Chet Harden, president of Western Nevada College. Chet, would you stand up? A lot of people haven't seen you. <laughs> Vice President Mark Gann. I just saw our academic vice president, and he's been here now one full year, Robert Weniger. He's back in the back back there. A couple of other people I'd like to recognize, uh, people that have kept this program going for years, and not only the academy, but the academic program. Sheriff Kenny Prolong. Under Sheriff's a gray headed guy in the back. Thanks for coming, Steve. One of our instructors has been with us for many, many years. Actually, there's two of them here. One was instructor of the year, I don't know how many times, Sergeant Jorge Pratt. And Sergeant Ken Cork. I'm sure I've missed a few, but. I apologize, um, can't get everybody all the time. The academy that we have today is difficult. These men and women went through arduous training, both academically and physically. The time they spent, the six months, is almost unimaginable to a lot of people that you can have that type of goal and keep it in the forefront the whole time. One of the ways they do that is because of you out there. So cadets, would you like to give your parents, wives, children a hint? Thank you for all you do and putting up with all the stuff that you had to put up with. These young men and women are gonna change over the next few years. Right now, if I truly ask them, who's your best friend? They probably would say someone they grew up with or someone they've known. Three years from now, I'll say, who are your five best friends? And they'll say, deputy sheriffs, police officers, etc." It's your job out there. It hasn't stopped. You really need to keep them grounded. Keep them grounded to the roots and remember the roots that you came from. It's one of the most difficult tasks there is in law enforcement. With that being said, I can't tell you how proud of them. I see some of my students back there, and it's just amazing that we have such quality people in this day and age. There's also one other sad note, and that's that Commander Katie Durbin is retiring this year. So can we give Katie a round of applause? She's put up with a lot of the years. <laughs> Katie and I have been together over 20 years, and we formed our bond like you would any law enforcement partnership. We both come from law enforcement, obviously. I don't think there's a thing I've done over the last 20 years that I haven't told Katie or vice versa. We've been each other's confidant for years, and to be quite honest with you, no one's gonna miss her more than I am. But this is the happy occasion, so let's move right along. 
I would like to thank, before we get in any further, Bob and Penny Waters. Are they here? Bob, Penny, are you here? Thank you so much for the scholarship, a full ride scholarship that that gave to Jesus Lopez. Jesus, would you please stand? Bob and Penny, thank you so much. It's amazing. Now I'd like to introduce for the benediction Robert Bledsoe. And thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Let's take a minute and give thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Father, we thank you for the men and women behind me today, for the honor, courage, and commitment they have to stand in the gap for others. Father, this is a day of celebration, but we also know that there is a terrible price that is occasionally paid. And we ask you, Lord, that you would bless these men and women. You would continue to strengthen them, bless them, give them the ability to be understanding and caring, yet firm when needed. Lord, we thank their instructors for all they have done in instilling the lessons to do this job. Father, we thank you. We praise you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. enforcement for four years. He's a graduate of the FBI National Academy. Joe has been instructing for this academy since its inception and has taught well over 300 of our graduates. Joe finally retired from law enforcement last year but continues to teach for us as well as for the Nevada State Post and the Department of Public Safety Academies. Joe is not just law enforcement instructor. He's a retired sergeant with Douglas County Sheriff's Department and more recently under sheriff for Lyon County. He's my friend, mentor, sounding board, and part-time therapist. Ladies and gentlemen, keynote speaker tonight today is Joe Sanford. Being here today, get off to a, a rough start and try and try and pick this up a little bit. Commander Durbin, graduating class 20. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today on, on such a, a special, joyous occasion. When a police officer is killed, it's not just an agency that loses an officer. It's an, it's an entire nation. And Richard, thank you for taking the heat off me because I wasn't gonna be able to talk about these, these two guys today. But they're all in our thoughts and our prayers. Ladies, gentlemen, I know this has been at times a, a very trying six months. I also know there is no classroom, no book, no movie that is going to prepare you for the things that you will feel and experience in your career. Some good, some bad, but all different and in their own, their very own perverse way, interesting. In deciding what to say to you today, I thought of a few pointers that you may find helpful. My career in, in policing 
certainly would have been less painful and probably even more satisfying if somebody had told me a few important things when I started this job some 40 years ago. Those things are what I want to share with you today, hoping that you can avoid hitting some of the rough spots that many of us old timers have hit. It's important that you don't take yourself too seriously. Laughter at the appropriate times can help you survive on the job. A healthy police organization is one where you can hear a lot of laughter. No one wants to work at a place where everybody looks and sounds miserable all the time. So please do your part. Remember everything we taught you about officer safety. But realize that most people are not going to try and kill or hurt you. Some of them might actually like you. Most folks are not bad guys. So once you have determined that you're not in danger, it's perfectly all right to loosen up a little bit. Be yourself. It's going to feel better as well. When in doubt, ask yourself how, would you, how you would like to be treated if the roles were reversed, or how you would like your mother, your spouse, your child to be treated by someone wearing that uniform. And most importantly, do what is right when no one is watching. Do not try to be a crime fighter 24 hours a day, seven days a week. First, it's going to wear you out. And second, 24-hour crime pressures sometimes get themselves into situations they should not. Identify someone early on, and Richard mentioned this. Identify someone early on you can talk to about your biggest worries, your darkest fears. And remember that, it, that no matter how, how it feels at the time, you are never ever alone. For some people, that may be a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a parent, or a peer with whom you feel comfortable. But make sure you are talking to someone, talking to someone about those stresses and those perplexities that you find at work. If you try to keep them all inside, eventually you will explode. Simple as that. Do not try to totally shield your loved ones from what is going on at work and in your world. If you do, you may only succeed at worrying them when you come home acting differently. You don't have to relate every grisly detail about what is troubling you, but do let them know what is bothering you. Who knows, they just might be able to help. And never ever forget that big boys and girls do cry. There is absolutely no shame in that. In fact, it makes us realize that we are indeed human a point of which we need to be reminded on a frequent basis. Be careful whom you emulate. It's perfectly natural that sometimes a new officer wants to be just like his training officer. This guy rocks. I want to be just like him. But realize that you can never be anybody but yourself. And you know what? That's good enough. Put together the kind of officer you want to be by assembling the best parts of people you have, have observed in action. Then make your own improvements in the way they operate to become the best cop that you can be. Assume that until and unless they prove otherwise, you can trust the wisdom and decisions of your supervisors. I know that's hard to believe, but you can. As a young officer, I was thoroughly convinced that my sergeant's foremost goal in life was to keep me from having fun. Now, many years later, I realized that he was just trying to keep me out of trouble. And at the same time, he was trying to help me learn. Please trust us. 
I think you will find that we rarely let you down. Watch out for that dangerous three to five year mark when you think you have all the answers. I'm pretty certain the truth is you don't. If you survive that risky period, you almost certainly will recognize that law enforcement is a field where you never will have all the answers. But try to keep learning throughout your career. Do not cheat. It is as simple as that. I was reading recently about an entire academy class in Cobb County, Georgia, who was fired for cheating on a written examination. Don't lie. There is absolutely no room in law enforcement for a dishonest cop. Realize that good ends never justify bad means. Excessive force, for example, is never all right, no matter how evil the criminal. Always follow the rules. It is simply the right thing to do. The bad actions of one officer cast a giant shadow on all, on all of us, including the more than 20,000 officers who have given their lives for this profession. If you can't live by and uphold the rules you were sworn to protect, get out of the job. Accept the fact that people will seek you out, both on duty and off duty. Enjoy the attention. You're doing something special that people who make a lot more money than you find exciting and interesting. Granted, you may not enjoy the interruption when you're trying to have a dinner break at the local diner. But try to be patient and enjoy being the expert. Every once in a while, step back and look at yourself. Are you getting bad, Chevy? Is that head getting a little big? All of us have, who have been on the job for a while have known someone who fits that description. If you find yourself becoming a victim of that syndrome, just lighten up, dude. Just lighten up. Realize that you truly are part of a cause few people are today. As corny as it may sound, you really are part of that thin blue line. That line that stands between the good people and those who would victimize them. That's why most of us pinned on the badge anyway, so don't be ashamed to admit it. If you ever cease to enjoy what you are doing at least most of the time. Get out of the work. Every now and then there are some, pe some people who are simply not cut out to do this job. They would just be happier doing something else. Life is too short to be unhappy. If you sense over, the, over time that this career is not what you expected, do not hesitate to make a change. You owe it to yourself as well as your loved ones. Always listen to that little voice, little voice in the back of your head, that common sense that is trying to tell you that if you do something or you fail to do something, you are liable to get in trouble or worse. It's the same little voice that every one of us should have listened to, but I venture to bet most of us did not. Oftentimes, we all later wish we had. If it feels wrong, it probably is. And trust when I say it's the little things that are going to get you. Use the camera test. If a camera was recording what you were doing or thinking about doing, 
and your loved ones were sitting at home watching the program, would you still be comfortable doing it? Act on what your conscience tells you is your best guideline for the middle of that dark, lonely night when no one but you may ever know what you do. Allow me to close today with one last thought. And this goes for all uniforms in the audience. The circumstances of your newfound career sometimes may have a harmful effect on you. As warriors, you will put on your armor every day as you prepare for shift. As you don the bullet resistant vest, you cinch up your duty belt, put your pistol in your holster. You also don the mental attitude to take on the challenges of the day. That armor protects us. And at times, we begin to cherish that armor without recognizing its limitations. Although the armor serves you perfectly at work, you must constantly remind yourself to remove your armor before going home to family and loved ones. Sometimes, we wear our armor home where it hurts those very family members to whom we owe the greatest protection. Too often, we forget this simple process and bring our armor into our homes with all its consequences. Yeah. Simply be aware when you need your armor on the job and when you need to be transparent and caring at home. Be happy, do your best, but most of all be safe. May each of you have a safe, enjoyable, and contributing law enforcement career. Thank you for allowing me to be part of it. Thank you, Joe. Tom Rolfe was our first firearms range master. He is a retired Nevada trooper and is currently working for the legislative police. His expertise with firearms is unsurpassed and, as un and his unwavering dedication to our students has resulted in another successful year. Nobody got shot, thank God. <laughs> Tom has the unique ability to see each individual's idiosyncrasies, dial in what's going to improve their aim, and give them the confidence to excel on the firearms range. He will be presenting the Firearms Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Rolfe. Thank you all for being here. I want to thank everybody for their, uh, their service. Anybody that has served in our military, police, fire, Thank you for your service and their family for their sacrifices. I need to thank three people that helped me or four people that helped me. Robbie Robinson, Wes Francis, um, <clears throat> Mr. Webster, Gary Webster, Jason Galt for their assistance on the range. Thank the students and thank Katie for allowing me another time to, sh to share my expertise. <clears throat> this is one skill that I hope they'll never have to use. But as you know, it seems that the shootings are up with those in uniform. Okay, <clears throat> just to name a few from our own IHOP incident, four officers in a coffee shop in uniform in Washington, recent shooting in Georgia courthouse, and now the two in Las Vegas. You all stay in that condition yellow, orange, ready for red. Shooting's a perishable skill. Practice good habits. Be alert at all times. And now for the awards. Marksmanship, <clears throat> Mr. Chris Lotz. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Overall award, Mitch Hammond for Top Gun. This takes in the shooting, written, shotgun, handgun. Thanks, sir. Thank you all. Thanks, Tom. When we were out on uh, doing all kinds of training, Chris Lott says, I may not be good at this, but you watch me. I'm going to get that award on the range. And by God, you did, son. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> the next awards to be given out are the EVOC awards. Joe's style of teaching has enriched the cadet's learning experience. He uses his vast knowledge and unique sense of humor to ensure the cadets retain the information long after they graduate. Joe teaches many of the classes for the academy, one of which is the lead instructor for the emergency vehicle operations course. He will be presenting the award for Top Gun EVOC. Joe? promise to keep it short, <laughs> relatively speaking. For those of you who don't know what EVOC is, it, as Katie alluded, it's emergency vehicle operations. And it's, it's a 40-hour course of stressful fun, and probably more fun than should be allowed. Probably one of the only times in your career where you're going to be able to drive like a knucklehead and not generate complaints or, or terminations. It's a place where the cadets learn to drive safely and efficiently and a place where the cadets develop and, and hone their driving skills. We do several things. We do um, acceleration, cornering, braking, backing, and perception reaction. It's a core class of the academy simply because one only needs to, to look at the officer, the yearly officer killed summaries um, and understand how dangerous a, the seemingly simple act of, of driving a patrol car is. Of the 55 law enforcement officers killed so far in, in 2014, 25 of those officers were killed in motor vehicle accidents. It's a simple sad fact that the act of operating a patrol vehicle is, is probably one of the most dangerous day-to-day -day aspects of a, a relatively safe job. It's for these reasons that EVOC is a skill, is a core skill, and the applications learned are of such importance. It's also well known in the academy groups that the most proficient driver in EVOC is awarded the EVOC Top Gun Driving Award. It's an award that is most often sought after, but it's only earned by those who show driving skill, written knowledge, and overall ability to properly operate a patrol unit. Upon final testing, all cadets are required to, com to complete a written examination and a series of driving tasks covering all aspects of ve vehicle operation without error. And it's further required that those driving skills are completed within a 10 second window on two consecutive attempts. So the pressure is really on. It's only through achieving a perfect score on the written test as well as the practical driving test that the cadet can earn the Top Gun Award for the Academy. Dave, if you would, would come up with me please. Dave Holmes is, is one of my partners in crime in EBUC. Dave has, is a retired Reno officer with Reno Police Department. Prior to that, he was with the uh, state of Idaho. And Dave's ex expertise is, is, just goes beyond. He's been a, a driving instructor, I believe, since 1993, if I'm not mistaken. He was just a young fellow when he started, but uh, I appreciate his, his help. And at this point, it's, it's a pleasure of Commander, Commander Durbin and EVOC staff 
to award this year's Top Gun Driving Award to Cadet Brian Green. Hey, my man. Brian's skill and enthusiasm was was great for that entire week that, that he was on the track. That skill and enthusiasm helped him achieve the most proficient course time of one minute, ten seconds, point four seven, and one minute, eleven seconds, point nine five. You can't get much more consistent than that. You give this to. Thank you, Brian. It was awesome. Without question, Cadet Green has proven himself to be a disciplined and a consistent driver and has certainly earned this year's award. But Academy staff was, was faced with an unusual dilemma this year. Unusual but, but pleasant nonetheless. We had a problem of, of having a, a second perfect score of a young man that, that followed very closely to Cadet Green with a similar skill set and we thought it only fair to recognize the fact that Cadet Kyle Powell also demonstrated exemplary <laughs> Cadet Powell demonstrated exemplary, exemplary driving abilities, easy for me to say and earn perfect scores on both the written and the practical test with very consistent course times of 1 minute 16.16 seconds and 1 minute 17.10 seconds. Talk about splitting hairs, you can't get any any better than that. So, Kyle, proud of you, sir. I almost forgot one thing. Oops, almost forgot one thing. And then I'll get the hell out of your hair, I promise. I promise. I know what you're all thinking. One more important aspect of this academy. Academy class 20 is the final graduating class that Commander Durbin will oversee. I know this was, was brought up, but I'm going to pursue it just a little bit further. Katie has announced her well-earned retirement effective this August. Commander Durbin Katie, Katie Sue, Mom, they're all names that we became familiar with and fond of over the years and they will be dearly missed in the future. You have never lived until you have had a shoe thrown at you by Katie. <laughs> with love, of course, there is no doubt. Katie has been instrumental in successfully overseeing 20 academy classes. Of course, beginning with Academy One in 1996. Don't try and figure that it hasn't been 20 years because for a couple years we did two a year and then it just got a little bit too much. Under Katie's guidance, the Western Nevada College, Western Nevada Peace Officers Academy has graduated 367 cadets to date. I think that's a hell of an accomplishment. Katie always quips that she has kids all over the state. I think this is truly evidenced by the fact that this academy course, the Western Nevada College, boasts a 94% job placement rating through this police academy. I, I think those numbers would, would make any Fortune 500 company pretty envious. The compassion, the dedication, the outright concern shown to every cadet is only a small sampling of a wonderful woman, don't cry, <laughs> who has always been dedicated to the law enforcement community. Ladies and gentlemen, Academy Class 20, once again, please put your hands together for Commander Katie Derby.
Anybody got a hanky? <laughs> Doggone, you guys. On to the most coveted award. It was neck and neck for a while as to who would get this coveted award. The salutatorian, Chris Doriso. <laughs> he was always just a tenth of a point away. And the language that came out of his mouth when he said, there's children, duck on it. He got it. This year's recipient of the valedictorian award is a very quiet and focused young man. His dedication to becoming the best he can be is evident in his accomplishment. I would like to share what some of his peers have, have to say about him. He's a smart kid, quiet and reserved, very polite and organized person very responsible and will make a good cop. Very humble person with a strong drive. Very motivated and a positive person. Studies and works hard. These peer evaluations couldn't have said it any better. This year's valedictorian, ladies and gentlemen, Christopher John Ballesteros. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank everyone in attendance for being here in this important moment in our lives. To all family and friends, thank you for supporting, having faith, and believing in us through our six-month journey to become peace officers. I'd like to thank my mom and dad, my girlfriend Andrea, and the loved ones close to me. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I'd like to personally thank Commander Katie Durbin for setting high expectations for us to strive for the best. If it were not for Commander Katie Durbin, we would not be here today sitting in front of all of you. The class and I were very grateful to have you as our Commander Katie. In addition, I'd like to thank all the instructors from the various classes. All the classes which we attended during the last six months supplied us very important information which for the field we're about to enter. But to begin, I remember seeing my first email from Commander Durbin which said that first PT test would be four days before Christmas. I was anxious nervous and excited to start the journey. I'm pretty sure my fellow peers had the same mixed emotions. That following week after completing that PT test, we all met each other for orientation to introduce ourselves and to get to know each other. The next day, we took a 400 question test, which we were all not prepared for and unfortunately did not do too well. But that was six months ago. In the last week, we took a similar test and we all completed that test with ease. We have gone through and experienced a lot throughout the academy, and I could talk about it all. However, I'll leave the in-between for the reflection speech. But today, it is my honor to represent the class of 2014 as the honor graduate of the WNC Post Academy. Throughout the academy, I was a quiet one, and this is probably the most my fellow peers have ever heard me speak. <laughs> However, I observed a lot throughout the academy, and I was able to get to know each and, each and every single one of them. Each of these individuals sitting in front of you today are extremely dedicated, hardworking, and resilient. They don't want to smoke and joke, but when it's time for work, they are professional and very ethical. Additionally, a majority of them have to balance full-time jobs, support their families, and even have to commute from Reno and even Fallon to attend class five days a week. In my opinion, all these individuals represented in front of you are honor graduates in this academy. At any rate, I, w I could recall some bad memories from the last six months, like having to watch each other get tased until it was our turn. <laughs> and, then being ha and then being pepper sprayed, having to deal with it burning on our face for a couple of hours afterwards. And that wasn't too fun at all. However, the good memories always override the bad ones. 
For instance, driving vehicles at high speeds without stepping on the brakes on the EVOC course, to shooting hundreds of, round, hundreds of rounds at the gun range at night to wake up the prisoners next door. <laughs> as well as listening to Lots always tease Ian, and then Wade always motivating everybody to get that money. <laughs> However, I'd like to say it's been my honor to attend the Academy with all of you for the past six months. We're going to go our separate ways, but I know we will see each other in, in the near future. I want to paraphrase the following speech, which was given by Police Chief Michael Window of Charles City, Iowa, at a graduation that I thought might prepare us for our future. And here it goes. After you receive your certificates, you'll become law enforcement officers working for various agencies. You'll be referred to as law enforcement officers every day. You will refer your, yourselves as law enforcement or, excuse me, law enforcement officers. In fact, when people introduce you to others, they're probably going to include the fact that you are a law enforcement officer. In reality, enforcing the law is only a small part of what you will be doing. If all you did was enforce the law, you'd be useless at three quarters of the calls you'd be taking. You'd be called to try and wake someone in the middle of the night who laid themselves to rest for the last time. This is enforcing the law, but it is law enforcement. You'll be the first to arrive at the scene of medical emergencies and start CPR on a heart attack victim, or try to stop the bleeding of someone who was injured. This isn't forcing law, but it is law enforcement. You respond to a traffic accident and tend to people's broken bodies before doing anything else. And when things don't turn out as we would like, it'll be your job to visit the next of kin and deliver the news. This isn't enforcing the law, but it is law enforcement. You have to help the elderly to their feet when they have fallen and can't get up and you'll have to be called to help get cats out of the trees. The list is endless, so only a fraction of it will be enforcing the law, but it is all law enforcement. You took the job because you want to help people and give back to the community. You are members of your community, members who realize that sometimes there are things that need to be done that are not easy to do. Remember the reason you took the job was to protect your family, friends, and neighbors. But remember, they are your they are your greatest asset because they are there to be support you when things are bad. I can guarantee you there will be bad times. If you stop a person for speeding, treat them with fair and respect. Remember this because although you may not know that person you are dealing with, they are family, friends, and neighbors of the community you serve. When you are in that elderly person's home and they seem to want to talk, spend a few minutes with them and ask them about the pictures on the wall. When you have to deliver bad news to someone, Take the time to their needs are met before leaving them to grieve on their own. And when you do have to enforce the law, be firm and fair. And remember that the community that you serve includes everyone. That concludes Police Chief Michael Wendell's speech. And I'd like to say we are your sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, boyfriends, girlfriends, moms and dads, husbands and wives. We are the graduating class of Western Nevada College, WNC Post Academy 2014. And to all my fellow peers, I wish you all long, successful careers. Thank you all. Good job. Awesome. When I asked Mitch Hammond last March if he would give the student reflection speech, I knew he would be the perfect choice for this task. But now I'm scared. <laughs> His dedication, tenacity, and competitive spirit are the stuff that all good cops are made of. Mitch epitomizes all the past and present cadets. And in this audience, there's a whole lot of past cadets. He works full time, attends classes, takes care of his household, <coughs> and upholds the highest standards in professionalism. Ladies and gentlemen, Mitch Hammond. Good morning. Good morning. Jeez. All right, here we go. <laughs> to 
distinguished guests, Commander Katie Durbin, our great instructors, my fellow graduates, and to our family, friends, and supporters. It is my great honor today to have been selected to give the reflection speech about our time here at the Academy. However, when I thought about this great honor, I realized I had to speak about all our time because we went through this um, process as one. The Academy was not going to be an easy process, rather it was going to be very arduous. The goal is to be here today and to go on to wear the badge with all its great responsibilities, hardships, and rewards. Well, my friends, we have achieved this goal. Now, getting to this goal required a lot of hard work, dedication, and a few laughs. More importantly, it required sacrifice of our family and our friends. January 4, 2014 is when it all began. We had completed a 400 question pretest and then we introduced ourselves to one another. We started out with 23 great individuals. Unfortunately, only 19 of us remain here today. Ms. Durbin's high standards of 80% required us to give our total effort to achieve this goal. The 19 of us here today have not only kept the 80% overall GPA, but have completed every critical subject with a mandatory 80%. I want to take a moment to say, in case you didn't hear before, that this is uh, Katie Durbin's 20th year overseeing the Post Academy at WNC. We have the honor of being her last and final Academy, uh, Academy of Cadets in her lifelong dedication and career in law enforcement. She has produced some of the greatest law enforcement officers in Nevada and abroad. Almost every one of our instructors were a product of her past academies, or they've helped instruct from day one 20 years ago. All right. I would like to take a moment to congratulate her on her many accomplishments and efforts over the years. Katie Durbin, will you please stand? Mom? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And from our from our class to you, we'd like to give you a plaque. That reads Katie Durbin, congratulations, 20 years of excellent education excellence. You have been a mentor and inspiration to all of us. With sincere respect and gratitude, class 2014. And for Mr. Green, this is, you want me to open it? Okay. If it's a snake, I'm leaving. <laughs> it's a nice bottle of wine. Ooh. <laughs> Celebrate. Yeah. If you didn't know, Katie Thank Durbin's you. a wine drinker, so. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Now, <clears throat> what many of you might not have known was that Commander Durbin had this habit of pinching or hitting you on the back of the arm if you got out of line. As you heard before, she may have thrown a boot at you. Well, a few of us got the pinch, a couple got the punch, and only two got the boot. <laughs> In the beginning, when I was selected as squad leader, I recall looking about the room at my fellow classmates and how everyone, I included, appeared apprehensive, anxious, worried, concerned about the upcoming challenges. 
This would become one of the greatest challenges for most of us, which would require an all-out effort. Our dream was to become police officers, deputy sheriffs, etc., serving our community, family, and friends. This challenge would affect not just us, but our family and friends, which I'll discuss later. Financially, the goal would be a burden as we had to purchase weapons for the range, gear for our belts, and if you didn't know, a holster alone can cost anywhere from $100 to $200. Tuition itself, five months, was roughly $3,500, and added to this was the ammunition. By the end of five months, to pursue our dreams would cost us roughly $7,000. A month into the program, we began Defensive Tactics, or DTs. We had some of the greatest instructors such as deputies Adams, Kennison, Williams, Palomar, and Officer Pruitt. There's nothing like hand-to-hand -hand combat with or without the tools of the trade. And who wouldn't love rolling around the mats with a bunch of sweaty men and women? The room being filled with odor of sweat, B.O., and dirty or smelly socks in this room. And hey, they were nice enough to make sure that there was no airflow. <laughs> At times we were thrown down to the floor with such vigor, it rang our bells, and occasionally we had a nosebleed. Ah, oh, what great memories, great memories. Every weekend we began with an hour or so of physical fitness or PT. And again, we had great instructors. He's not here today, but DPS, NDI, Detective Galt, Carson City deputies, uh, Palomar and Viglietta, Washoe County School Police, uh, Deputy Platzmeyer, and again, Officer Pruitt. Thank you, gentlemen, for helping us make our team one team, one fight. It was almost two months before we had our first block test. This test covered 13 subjects that we, over the last eight weeks, four of which were of a critical subject. We were all frantic, worried beyond belief, and if that weren't enough, we were tested on the alpha code, spelling words, and several terms we had to know verbatim. This night would prove to all of us whether we would continue or be dismissed. Most of us just wanted to get back into a smelly room throwing each other on the ground of defensive tactics. But to make it worse, a uh, great majority of the class fell ill uh, the week prior to the big test. And if you ask me, this was a stress sick. The pressures of passing or failing was great to all of us. At the night's end, I waited with the rest. And boy, was I happy and relieved when we had all passed. But it was a small step to our goal, and the pressure would reappear. Luckily, in March, we spent the time, our time in the class with another block test but nothing was of a critical subject. So prior months, dreadful pressure was not a, as great. March did have its memories, however, <laughs> and it would not be fair for me not to mention our little attention to detail incident during crime scene investigations. <laughs> I will not mention any names, Mr. Flores. Where's he at? Raise your hand, Flores. Come on, raise it high, be proud. There you go. All right. That when photographing a crime scene, you need to check your six o'clock prior to moving about the room. See, this was a class taught by Elon, and we all learned some great humor and life lessons. On this occasion, I was the investigation's team leader, and Mr. Flores was my photographer. Well, the door was closed in order to take pictures of the evidence found behind the closed door. I, was, I knocked on the door's window to come in, I was abruptly halted so that Mr. Flores could finish his photos. <laughs> when the door opened, there was a lot of chaos. And what we found was that Mr. Flores had backed into the desk while photo uh, photographing the backside of the door and its evidence. What he should have recalled, especially after taking several photos of the physical evidence on the desk, that this crime scene was of a sexual nature. And the evidence he now sat on was that of the 
perpetrators, I'm not going to say this word, but perpetrators yeah. fluids. <laughs> so, now Mr. Flores not only had <laughs> perpetrator fluid on his buttocks, but he now had to involuntarily give up his pants to the evidence team. His reward was that he had to wear women, a woman's denim jean skirt for the rest of the evening. <laughs> but we all had some incident like this. All right, maybe not just like this, but. We had some occasion where we became the center of joking. For example, I'd like to recognize a few of the nicknames that we had throughout the course. Some did have a nickname, and others unlikely, unluckily, sorry, had more than one. Uh, Mr. Green, he had the name, he started out in the academy with the name Fingers, because uh, he was hanging Christmas lights in December, and his ladder gave way, he grabbed a hold of the rain gutter, <laughs> the rain gutter gave way, and out of 10 digits, I think you showed up with eight, stitched, 11, <laughs> all right, 11 digits, <laughs> stitched up and heavily gauzed. Mr. Green also uh, went by the nickname of Griswold. Uh, <laughs> after the instructors uh, learned of the incident of Mr. Green and the Christmas lights, they decided to call him Griswold after the Christmas story. <laughs> Mr. Green also has a nickname of Butters. <laughs> and you're going to have to ask him about that one on your own. <laughs> Mr. Hall went by Drew Carey. Where are you at, Hall? <laughs> if you take a look at Mr. Hall, you'll see the resemblance. All right, Mr. Hall, you also went by Tic Tac. <laughs> Uh, again, you're going to have to ask him about that one on your own. Okay, so moving on. Myself, there's kids in here, so I went by ASS. <laughs> and this is because I was out duck hunting with my son prior to the academy start, and I broke, we broke through some ice, and I fell on my rear, and it hurt bad. <laughs> okay, I also went by the nickname Hambone which is a military nickname, and it stuck with me through the academy. And then I'm going to follow that up with Miss Zamora, who had the nickname of Zambone. Not only was she my buddy, but she was my teammate as well. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lotz. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lotz, uh, chirp, chirp. And I swear, you're going to have to ask him about that one on your own. I, I got you, Mom. I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Flor and I hit him up on that after. He'll, he'll gladly explain. Mr. Flores went by Farva and Radio. And if you don't recall, that comes from the movie Super Troopers. Carl went by the nickname Twink. Uh, during Detective Gold's class on interviewing and interrogation, he interrogated Carl about <laughs> how when Carl was younger, uh, he, how he had sat on a trooper's lap, <laughs> and how he, the trooper, had made him feel good. <laughs> and Detective Gold's response was, hmm, tell me more. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Lopez uh, went by uh, Lopi. <laughs> I had to throw that one out there, Tom. Uh, Mr. Kao Pao went by Kapow. <laughs> and if you didn't know, he's a huge fan of Beavis and Butthead. <sighs> Jayla was Mr. Eric Wilhelm. Where you at, Eric? Raise your hand, buddy. All right, well, this one was nicknamed to him during our PT because for some reason, um, Eric looked like a tent every time we did push ups. I don't know if he just. Well, the, the nickname was JLo. 
And then finally we have Commander Durbin. <laughs> uh, from the beginning we nicknamed her Mama Bear because we were her cubs and she was our beloved guide and leader. Mama Bear. Well, we had lots of fun in a we had lots of fun in a difficult situation. Uh, the month of April, Trooper Tina Conrad. I was part of week one, and we crushed so many cones that I swear to God that they were going to have to purchase five thousand more just for week two. <laughs> My nickname for us was the Cone Crushers. Uh, there's one individual who's not up here tonight or this morning that demolished a cone so badly that I actually wanted to give it to her as a, a souvenir. At this time, I would like to uh, present an award to this year's academy, number one instructor, retired undersheriff for Lyon County, Joe Sanford. Thank you, sir. And we appreciate everything you've done to help us. In May, we spent two weeks at the Carson City Prison Range, two whole weeks of shooting with the pressure to score well. During this time, we experienced all the weather that Nevada had to offer. One day it was hot and sunny. The next day was breezy and cloudy. We had rain, downpours, puddles, swamp-like conditions. And then the next day it was sunny again. Weird. Some days we had wind and other days we had none. Some days we had humidity, which made it more difficult to shoot, and other days we did not. The constant, however, seemed to be when the lovely mosquitoes, who were thick and relentless, as they tried to make us, our, uh, us their lunch, my congratulations goes to everyone on the range. No one got hurt, and no one caused Katie to, to have a stroke. <laughs> we had some of the best shooters known in northern Nevada as instructors, such as 40-year-plus veteran and now legislator police officer Tom Rolfe, retired northern Nevada corrections NNC officer Robbie Robinson, retired DPS, NDI, and trooper Wes Francis, and Alaskan Corrections Officer Gary Webster. Thank you, gentlemen. You are among the best. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we had Officer Safety and Rescue. This was an intense class, and our instructors kept it very realistic. Our gratitude goes to the Carson City Sheriff's Department for their support. Thank you, Chief. Sheriff. <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> Thank you. God, I knew I was going to not get out of here without messing something up. I want to thank uh, Detective Dave, uh, Dan Gomes and Deputies Bob Guimont and Nick Pinochi. I don't know if you're out there, but thank you, gentlemen. I enjoyed the high-speed, low-drag of the course, and I'm sure everybody here did. Well, here we are. We've done it. But we didn't do it alone. My classmates and I helped each other, and we pulled through together. But I cannot just stop here. My gratitude goes out to you, the families and friends. We may have been the ones who made the decision to become officers of the law, but our families are the ones who had to endure just as much of the burden, if not more, than we did. They are the ones who have not only supported us emotionally, but have taken on all the responsibilities of household bills, taken the children to sports and school, and then only after homework, tucking them into bed at night while we were learning and praying to God that we would pass the next tests and sometimes asking ourselves, is it worth it? Personally, it was too difficult to drive to Carson each day for work and then school and then back home. I had rented an apartment here in Carson, which meant I was unable to see my beautiful wife and daughter each day. 
Considering I just returned home from a one-year deployment in Afghanistan, this was a huge burden on my heart. I cannot give a reflection today without thanking my pregnant wife, Wendy. <laughs> and it is mine. <laughs> and daughter Elizabeth. Where you at, Lizzie? They were my inspiration when the going got tough and I was not sure if I'd even make it through the academy. I love you both more than words can say. Honestly, I'm here to say thank you to all of you. You supported us, you, our family and friends. We would not be here today if it were not for you and your support. You all deserve a round of applause. I promise I'm almost done. All right, some of the other instructors throughout this year's academy that my classmates and I would like to recognize are Story County, Sergeant Ken Quirk. Thank you. Nevada State Post, Mike Sherlock and Karen Kendall, DPS Trooper Chris Austin and Captain Blair Harkle Road. We'd also like to thank Car City Reserve Deputy Daniel Boyer for his course in first responder and Commander Durbin's daughter and granddaughter. Ms. Tony Nielsen for her CPR course and her daughter, Ms. McKenzie, who inspired all of us. So was it all worth it? I think I speak for all of us when I say yes, absolutely. More importantly, and each of us know this in our heart, will the citizens of the community say it was worth it as we venture out to serve and protect them? My hope is that in many years from now, that they'll loudly say, you will loudly say yes. What you did do is or was worth it. Congratulations to my classmates. You are my brothers and sisters. It wouldn't be nice. Chirp, chirp. Wow, he's tall. You had to throw in that chirp, chirp. Holy moly. When they told me what it meant, I almost died. <laughs> Thanks, Savannah. You gave me nightmares. We're going to do a video presentation. It's difficult to condense 756 hours of training into four short minutes. But I wanted to give you an idea of what these men and women have been through these last 22 weeks. They've been beaten, although not severely. They've been pepper sprayed, tased, and laughed at. Through it all, they've persevered, and I hope had some fun along the way. There's music because there was bad language.
was awesome. God, I love tasting them. <laughs> without the, I know everyone else has said it, but without the friends, the family, the wives, the husbands, the kids, who've put up with so much stuff, they wouldn't be here today. And I want to thank you all. I think it's almost that time, huh, guys? <laughs> Professor Finn was the creator of this academy. His idea to serve the public and create an extended format basic police academy was the beginning of over 300 law enforcement careers that have spanned the last 19 academies. With this, the 20th graduating class of WNC's Police Academy, and my last, I thought it only fitting that he pass out the certificates to these men and women. Richard, as this is our last bout together, would you do the honors? Savannah Dawn Cecilia Gray. Jesus Lopez Torres. Elan Reese Flores. Jesus Marquez Ramos. Jordan Montgomery Jemlovsky. <laughs> Eric Bartel Wilhelm. <laughs> Michael Scott Hall. <laughs> Shane Everett Roberts. <laughs> Jessica Aaron Zamora. <laughs> Sam David Ugaldi. <laughs> Wade Nicholas Wolford. <laughs> Ian Eric Carl. Christian Daniel Deriso. <laughs> Joshua Malin Teeter. <laughs> and to your right. Christopher John Ballesteros. <laughs> Kyle Christopher Powell. Brian Kirk Green. Christopher Michael Lotz. And Mitchell Shane Hammond Sr. That's what it's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the class of 2014, Academy 20. Good job. For the last time. <laughs> is best.
Thank you all for coming. <laughs>